Hello there again. This session deals with a cone and in this cone we're going to draw the front side and plan as I've already done. So the front side and plan for a cone, for a regular cone, is very simple. It looks like a triangle both in the front and in the side. They're exactly the same. And the top, the top view, the plan, looks like a circle. Now those would have been ready if, if I have not truncated, cut off the top part of my cone as I'm going to do later on. So I'm going to cut off along that line for a truncation. So that will give me a different view in all three. And so a different development. But before I truncate it, I want to finish off the development. Alright, so it's wiser always to start off your views, even if it's already truncated, with a whole cone so a whole front side and plan and a whole development. So, as I had discussed in the true length session, the, the, the cone, the true length for its side, is always one of its edges. It's either this length or this length, because they're both the same. I'm going to take this length because it saves me some more space when I'm rotating for the development. So I'm going to take a line parallel to that line Take it to the side view and draw a line which is the exact same perpendicular height of my front and side. So it should start from there and it should end there. Right, that is the true length of my development. So for my development, I'm going to take this as the top point. I'm going to open the composite as far as my true length and take an arc. Now that arc should be as long as the circumference of the circuit. Now to get that length, I'm going to divide the circumference into 12 parts. Now this time I'm going to use the compass to do that. I'm going to open the compass as far as the radius. And then from each corner, I've already crossed into four. So from each corner, I'm going to mark off these marks on the circumference. That will divide the circle into 12 parts an easy way how to divide a circle into 12. Could have also been done with the 30-60 degree angle. should be kept fainter than the outline because they're just construction lines. I'm drawing them a bit dark so you could have so you could see them. So I've split that circumference into 12. I'm going to take one of these divisions, one length with my compass and I'm going to mark off 12 divisions along this line. And that fit exactly. So the development should be up to here. Each of these lines, I'm going to draw a 2H line that joins to the dot. 
Well, these are going to be guides for when I truncate that view. Now, apart from dividing also the development, I should also divide the front and the side. And each of these lines would be given a number, as we did with the cylinder and as we did with the other pyramids. So that would be ready for a whole cone, but since I've been, I'm going to truncate it, I need these divisions. So I haven't truncated it yet, but as I'm going to later on, I'm going to take these projections from the plan onto the front view. They will be taken to the vertex of the cone. It's important that you remember that these lines, each division, should be taken to the top. They converge at one point and not parallel to uh, vertical lines as we did in the cylinder. It's a common mistake that these lines are drawn vertically. Now these divisions should also be taken to the side view. And I'm going to take them to the side view using the 45 degree projection line. So a line from the top of the plan, a line from the side of the side view. Set my set square to the 45 degree angle. And from where they, those two lines meet, project a 45 degree angle. So each of these divisions is going to be reflected onto the side view. Now vertically to the base, just to the base, so I know where each point is. And then remember that they should be taken to converge at the, at the top point. No, the truncation. I'm going to truncate off the edge of the cone at 45 degrees, like that. So that would mean that the top part there has been removed and I'm going to remain only with the bottom part. We should be drawn darker since that's the part that we're interested in and the top part doesn't really exist. So, the outline in HB, all the others into H. So, after you've truncated the top part, you need a numbering system. A numbering system so you can show on the other views where they have been sectioned off. Now this, since it has been reduced to the smallest side, I'm going to name it number one, which is this side here, number one. And then, Take the other points according to those. So that's number one, number two, number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Try to draw smaller numbers so that you can see them. I'm trying drawing them a bit bigger so everyone can see them a bit more clearer. Alright, so I've numbered these system this system clockwise. Where I've got the number 2, I've also projected that to number 2 there, which is with the number 12. So number 12 is the exact same height as number 2. These numberings should also be taken to the side view. So if you look on this view here, just project the numbers 
as we did before. That's number one. That's number two. So that does go on like this. I'm going around the cone like that. For the development, you always start off with the number one. and finish off with number one, since those two lines meet. So, development, you start off with number one, and you finish with number one.